What's going on, y'all? I'm here to talk about the buffs and changes to Goldengo and Gimme Ghoul chest form in my ROM hack, Pokemon Scribble Scarlet. So, if you're a new viewer here, shout out to you. I appreciate you clicking on this video. I'm sorry if it's not the type of uh, competitive analysis you might have been expecting from the title and the thumbnail and stuff, but stay tuned. This is a pretty sick ROM hack. It's got a lot of incredibly in depth uh, thoughts and buffs and changes to every single uh, Pokemon in the game. And Goldengo is no exception, despite the fact that his stats are unchanged. He's actually one of the few guys whose stats aren't touched. Not because they're like perfect or anything. They're honestly like I could tweak them a bit, but I just think they're unique, cool numbers, and I don't think any numbers need to be shifted around necessarily. And then mechanically, obviously, they're fine. So um, even by this hack standards, mostly because of all the cool moves and abilities he has, and just the raw typing and stuff being really good. But um, yeah, this guy's super cool. Uh, Gimme Ghoul is also sick. However, if you are curious on the other, <laughs> the other Gimme Ghoul. Uh, check after you're done with this video you can check out the video for him it should be up already at the time of watching this one so go give this video a watch too uh, the other gimme ghoul form is sick however sadly it's physically impossible for me to make them be able to change forms or anything like that um, normally you can't even get the roaming form in the real games but um, you can only get them in like through Pokemon Go but now they are separate entities however I can't make them like a three stage evolution line or anything like that it doesn't work you can't make Pokemon of the same species evolve into themselves it just doesn't physically work um, otherwise I would have loved to make them a, an optional three stage line where like every single Pokemon in the evolutionary line is an option um, you know with the roaming form being the fastest of the three and the most like hyper offensive uh, and of course having the different typing and then the chest form and goldengo being steel super tanky goldengo is kind of like an in-between between the roaming and the chest form but the chest form being like super super tanky and super super slow and then the roaming form being super fast and super strong uh, and like more of an offensive frail glass cannon type of thing goldengo is like an in-between a really good in-between or middle ground between those two um did i no, I didn't forget Make It Rain. Okay, <laughs> for a second I thought I forgot, I forgot Make It Rain. But yeah, uh, Make It Rain, as you can read, functions like Close Combat now. It's an endgame move, but it's not super, super endgame. It's, 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 I think it's like, what, maybe 19 boss fights if I can do math? 54, 56, no, 56, 58, 60, 63, 65, 64, 65, 66, 68, 65 again. That's 6 plus 7. Yeah, like 13 boss fights you'll have Make It Rain for. So that's a good amount um, you know, for such a spammable move. You know, Scarf, Make It Rain can get you a couple kills. I mean, it's just a really good move, right? No drawbacks. Um, the special attack, I mean, it, it technically has a drawback, but it's barely a drawback, right? Um, a lot of these weirder moves you might see are carry over from uh, the bug type pre-evolution form because both forms can evolve into Golden Ghost, so that's why he gets weird shit like U-Turn. I didn't even list bug biting, but technically, like, yeah, if you waited until level 40 to evolve this guy, you could, in theory, get Bug Bomb or Golden Ghost. <laughs> Uh, or, like, if you teach Struggle Bug before evolving, you could get Struggle Bug on Golden Go. But, like, you know, shit like that is, like, kind of a, a meme, right? But Bug Bomber's actually pretty good because um, it hits Dark and uh, Psychic and other stuff. Like, it's actually got some pretty good coverage. Um, and it's a multi-hit move. so And it's 112 power, right? It's very strong. Um, but it's also a multi-hit move, so that's super good for, like, Sashes and whatnot. So you could unironically try to get that early uh, Bug Bomber at level 40. Uh, Steel Beam gives you plus one special attack um, and takes half your HP. And it's a very, very powerful move, right? Um, however, it does take half your HP. As for the abilities, I probably should have covered that earlier, actually. Uh, abilities. So, obviously, you've got your good as gold, right? But in competitive, good. so why is good as gold great in competitive, right? It's great because it blocks shit like defog. It blocks hazard removal because he's also immune to rabbit spin. It block, 66 competitive singles pretty much entirely functions based on hazards, right? Entry hazards. In-game, does not because hazards are much less of a factor because you're not switching around constantly, or at least the AI. You are switching around, but the AI is not switching around constantly. Um, so therefore, hazards are not nearly as impactful as they would be versus a real human being who actually knows how to switch their Pokemon out. <laughs> um, so because of that, shit like Defog is literally never going to be a factor. Shit like Rapid Spin is pretty much never a factor on the AI outside of maybe super early in the game or like, no, pretty much only early in the game. Um, for the player, it is decently useful. Like, Parting Shot is kind of common, not even that common, honestly. Uh, being immune to shit like T-Wave randomly on the AI or like random sleep moves, that's the main best use of gold, a good as gold, is to be immune to status stuff like Dreamy Kiss, Hypnosis, you know, all these sleep moves. Um, because the AI will be abusing those a decent amount, so being immune to sleep is really good with good as gold and para, uh, or at least moves that have that, uh, that directly in 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 inflict that. Of course, you're not immune to like, you know, T-Ball para or anything like that, but you are immune to that type of stuff, so that's pretty good. Uh, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's just kind of niche. Um, however, your other two abilities are much more useful. So Sturdy. Sturdy, it might seem weird to some people, but it's it's literally taken directly from a dex entry. 
Like, it's it's one-to-one -one pulled. It literally says word for word, Golden Girl is a sturdy body made up of stacked coins, therefore good, uh, therefore sturdy, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, it's also very, very good mechanically. You're uh, supposed to play with item claws in this hack, so you only get one focus sash, so having a second focus sash essentially is super, super useful. Um, and then you can also use stuff like Endure Weakness Policy, uh, sorry, Sturdy Weakness Policy, um, Jackpot is great. So Jackpot, it's an end game move, but you only have it for the last seven boss fights. Honestly, I could probably push it to 60 because it does force you out after three turns. I mean, you can get a fourth kill with Volt Switch or like chip something with Volt Switch on the turn you're supposed to die, but you get three actual full kills, assuming that you even outspeed everything and kill everything at plus one. Um, and you aren't going to be forced out by the Quick Claw on the opponent's team, which uh, is a single-use consumable item now, so that'll stop uh, sweeps, as well as, of course, jackpot forcing you out in general. Um, but it also makes it really tanky, so you can use it defensively, too, for a couple turns to, like, 1v1 a specific Pokémon. However, yeah, so the Golden Go is super versatile, while Chest Worm is much more defensive than Golden Go, but it's much, obviously, slower, and also a good amount weaker. But it is incredibly bulky, and, of course, that battle armor, plus debuffing moves like Disarming Voice, dropping attack and special attack, um, is incredible, right? That's very, very, very useful. Um, metal Sound, dropping special attack by minus two, uh, and Spidef by minus two. Confide is the exact same thing, but only minus one, so both of those are great with Battle Armor. You know, you can completely turn off any special attackers, basically, and 1v1 them with Soul Absorb, which is Nightshade, but it heals you um, by the same amount of damage you deal. Only 5 PP, otherwise it'd be fucking insane. Um, but 5 PP means you can solo, like, one or maybe two Pokemon if you're tanky enough to do it, which... You know, go steal 115, 111 bulk is pretty damn good. Not to mention, Soul Absorb is even better because of your HP stat being low. Um, Soul Absorb, you get more recovery out of, <coughs> excuse me, out of uh, Soul Absorb. You also get Fortify at 30. It's a bit later than most Pokemon get heal moves at level one, right? But I gave it to them at 30 because I think Go Steal early game with Fortify is pretty busted. Although honestly, so is Soul Absorb. So you can argue I should have pushed Soul Absorb back too. We'll see how the game ends up playing out, right? Um, Early game, though, yeah, Soul Absorb, definitely pretty... I mean, in general, Soul Absorb's crazy. So you can keep Gimme Ghoul Chest Worm if you like him more, or if you want that pure bulk, pure utility. Um, and then it's also, you know, it can pack a punch. So 93 special attack is, is respectable, uh, solid. It's got good covers moves still. It's still got Make It Rain, all those other moves. So it can still do damaging stuff, but it's mostly like a stallier, bulkier type of guy. You know, body press, other utility moves, debuffing moves. That battle armor is great for Nuzlocke, that type of thing, which is, again, what the... What the excuse me, what the ROM hack is balanced around. Um, I opted to get them both switch because I try to give every Pokemon pivoting moves in this ROM hack. Uh, there are a couple that don't fit one. Um, off the top of my head is, I know, Bex Calibur, who's the next Pokemon. It doesn't get one because it just doesn't make sense to learn any of them. But Volt Switch, I mean, this guy already learns T-Bolt. I've, I've been pretty uh, strict with Volt Switch this time around. I was a lot more lenient in Sweltering Sun, but I've been pretty strict with it. But I think Golden Go actually does genuinely kind of fit to learn the move personally. He's got that little surfboard. He's like purely made out of coins. I don't know. I think it fits well enough. Um... <clears throat> The yeah, tactical tree is also great for getting that pivot. Um, I also like that he retains one ability from each form. So all of the Gimme Ghoul and Golden Ghosts have tactical retreat as a pivot option with that infinite ability cap so you can switch your ability, right? So you can teach, uh, or not teach, but equip tactical retreat whenever you need that free pivot, um, which is incredible, right? That's incredible versus AI. You can freely switch, switch your Pokemon around that way. Um, and then Sturdy is obviously useful to switch to as well. Even on chest form, it's good because obviously you're bulky, but it's still nice to have that complete assurance that you won't get one shot by something either by a crit or... I mean, actually, no, because you have battle armor for that, but it's just nice to switch in to any, like, powerful move, right? Or even just, like, sturdy weakness policy, and then, like, a, an attacking move, right? To, to, to fire back at whatever's in front of you and, and 1v1 something. That's another option. Tons of great uh, versatile options with these three abilities and the stat spreads that you get from these guys. Again, if you're curious about the other form, watch the video, because he's so much more different from these two. I, I figured it's worth giving him his own video. Um, but these two are pretty similar. I mean, with chest form just being a lot slower and bulkier, and... Uh, Golden Go being faster, more offensive, and still tanky. Again, it's sort of like a middle ground between its two pre-evolutions. So, yeah, Steel Beam's great. Spectral Beam is Ghost-type Draco Meteor, so that's obviously very good. Make It Rain being quite close combat is obviously very useful. I, I, yeah, I might honestly put, push Jackpot to 60, because it is... Eh. I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask you. Real quick. Okay, so um, I'll figure that out after the video. Maybe I'll make it at 60. Regardless, it's an end game move, right? 60 versus 100 is one, two, three, four extra bosses. So, um, yeah, good amount of bosses. Jackpot, the flavor text for that move is hilarious. Um, I definitely cooked with it. It's a kind of a meme, right? It's it's congratulations, you won. 
this will boost all your stats, but you neglected to pay your taxes, so you'll fade in four turns if you don't switch or run away. So essentially, um, if you don't Volt Switch out or Hard Switch out on that fourth turn, you die. Um, and that's obviously, you know, the last thing you want to happen in a Nuzlocke. So essentially you get three full turns or three turns three turns plus um, Volt Switch because that fourth, that first turn is taken up by actually using the move. So um, yeah, pretty sick overall. You can also U-turn out, obviously. U-turn uh, fits them well enough, in my opinion. I mean, it fits them even better than the Volt Switch. I mean, I see it totally fine. They've got like that little surfboard agile Agile, agile type of a uh, like design at origin, I guess you can call it. Um, I am relatively strict with those moves, but I, I, I do think if it's golden, go fine. Um, but yeah, I think I've covered pretty much everything. I mean, coverage. There's some again, some weird shit on here, like first impression and acro, and I mean acro fits fine actually, but some weird shit like first impression or lunge. Or, I mean lunge is also fine. You get my point. A couple of these weirder moves are because of the roaming form, like first impression specifically is because of the roaming form. Um, and then, like I covered earlier, you could, in theory, get Bug Bomber on this guy, too. I just don't have it listed. But you could, in theory, get Bug Bomber. Or even Finishing Blow, but I don't, I don't know why you'd ever run that on Golden Go. But yeah, um, yeah, you got you know, plenty of nice little coverage options. Good typing, good bulk, good utility. Very s kind of simple changes, in, the, in the, at least in the context of this ROM hack, but it's still very good nonetheless. Um, because of how many different ways you can use Golden Go, depending on the boss, depending on the situation. Uh, and then, of course, the fact that he has two very versatile and different pre-evolutions is really great, too, because it gives you almost multiple Pokemon in one slot, although it's you can't change it back. But, like, you can use Chest Form up until, say, level 45 or 50, and then, for some reason, d depending on a specific matchup, you can evolve them, you know, if you need that extra speed or that extra power or, or the uh, extra utility that Golden Go can provide over Chest Form. But, of course, Chest Form is great defensively and and whatnot so yeah uh thank you for listening let me know if you made it to the end of the video um i guess some other quick things i can mention although if you've listened this far into the video surely you already know this is like spook being priority that's good on both of them but especially chest form the uh, chest form piece to finish off a couple kills you know because it's slow um yeah that's basically it i mean even like metal sound siphon is pretty great you know siphon is a bug type breeding kiss so that's pretty great the reason i gave him that i think this next entry is talking about like draining the life force or some shit and like crazy yeah it sucks the life force out of scoundrels who try to steal the treasure so that's why i mean a lot of ghost types fit the move siphon for that reason and of course they fit soul absorb very well but that's any ghost type really does um yeah thank you for listening and i'll be back for more uh, coming up peace